What's going on everyone, Dots Gaming here, and today I'm bringing you guys the second video in my Ultimate PvP Beginner's Guide for the Elder Scrolls Online. And now this video is going to cover your build. You cannot hope to improve at PvP if you are missing important pieces to your build. Now I gotta make about 96 disclaimers before we get into this video because I want to try to avoid as many stupid comments as I physically can. So number one, this video is not going to be a how to build your character video. This is going to be just things to make sure you're not missing most of the time when i talk to people and they're like dots my build is bad my build sucks and i actually go over it with them they are they are just they're missing so much like just so much is wrong and so that's what i want to cover in this video today if you guys are looking for character builds i have literally a pvp guide for every single class every single role on my website dotsgaming.com so feel free to go check those builds out especially if the build's written by me it's literally the Build that I use on my own character. So feel free to go take a look at those and those will give you the base to get started. But with, like I said, with this video, I'm going to be covering the things you need to make sure you have, either if you're going to try to make a build yourself or if you're going to try to assemble one of my builds, things to make sure that you're not missing. Now, another disclaimer that I want to make is that I'm going to make some generalizations about things that you should, in my opinion, have in your PvP build. I understand that there are niche builds out there that aren't going to always require these things or people might have a play style that doesn't want to use these things but again this is i'm making the guide these are all just my opinions and these are recommendations that i have for people that are just getting started and things that i do myself but always keep in mind that there's some niche stuff that people do out there and if you want to try that go ahead but again these are just my opinions and the things i think you should try to have for your pvp build all right now with those disclaimers out of the way which will probably do nothing. Uh, <laughs> let's actually hop into the video. So with building your character, you need to make sure you're not leaving any stats on the table. You need to make sure you are not missing anything. And so I want to go through my character and cover all the overarching stuff you need to make sure that you have on your build. So the first thing is going to be that all of your armor should be at least purple quality you do not have to make it gold i know a lot of people are going to immediately start furiously that's gonna be what are you talking about you need to make a gold quality go home full send you know max stats it's, but, but for the majority of people this this is not required especially with the way that xenomax buffs and nerfs things so wildly i generally recommend for your for your average person to just go all purple on your armor pieces as well as your jewelry it's not worth the extra money to go to gold quality however you need this is not an option you need to make your weapon gold quality because you are going to be leaving i think it's like 200 weapon or spell damage at least on the table by sticking with a purple quality weapon you are you are handicapping yourself super hard without a gold quality weapon. It's, it is the only piece of gear that mandatorily must be gold quality, okay? Everything else can be purple. The weapon must be gold. Uh, if you're using a shield, it can stay purple. The, the weapons themselves are the things that need to be gold quality. Now, in terms of enchants, now, typically what I recommend, I, I usually will go more expensive on my enchants, but I'm going to recommend some ways that you guys can save some money on your head, your chest, your legs, jewelry and weapons, uh, two handed weapons. I would go with gold quality enchants for one handed weapons and small pieces. You can go with purple quality enchants because the amount of either stats or damage or whatever that you lose out from a gold quality enchant to a purple quality enchant on a small piece or a one-handed weapon is so minor but on the big pieces it's it's a decent amount so again big pieces i would say gold quality as well as jewelry gold quality enchants like i said in those two-handed weapons one-handed things you can stick with purple also if you are building a setup from somebody else that you're watching make sure you have all of the traits correct don't tell me that my build doesn't work for you if i recommend that you run seven in pen and you're running seven well fitted that's that's a different build at that point okay you need to make sure you have everything correct have all the correct traits have the correct enchants follow the guides 
that I've laid out to a T and then make adjustments that you feel that you want. Okay. So just wanted to cover that in terms of your gear. Now, in terms of some other overarching things you need to make sure that you have, make sure that you have a Mundus stone. I know that's really important. Make sure you have this, okay? You can get Mundestone buffs throughout the world. You could also visit, um, if you're in like any of my guilds or if I'm on your friends list, you can go to my house, I have all the good Mundestones in my house. Um, go to a friend's house, Gildy's house, whatever. Make sure you have a Mundestone buff because you're leaving a lot of stats on the table if you do not have one. The other thing to make sure that you have is, and mine just fell off, so it's a perfect time to demonstrate it, is a food buff. Not having a food buff is leaving a lot of stats on the table, and it actually pains me how many people do not play without food buffs. These are free stats, okay? You don't have to get the, the gold, cracked out, amazing foods. You can literally just start with purple foods if your budget is tight, okay? But make sure you always have a food buff running while you're PvPing because you will be leaving a lot of, no one PvPs without a food buff, okay? You are going to be leaving a lot of stats on the table if you do not use this. The other thing, same thing is potions, okay? Make sure you have a stack of potions for whatever you need in your builds, all right? You know, if, if you need to cover some buffs from your potions, um, if, you know, you can get a lot of good effects from, from potions, they're extremely important and a very, very, very crucial part to your pvp builds um i know like on my magic of dragon knight i run heroism and magic recovery potions which helps so much with my sustain on my stamina templar i run these immune uh immune potions the unstoppable ones because i find that i feel significantly tankier and my stamina sustains a lot better when i don't have to cc break as much you know so all these potions play an important role in your build so again make sure that you have those same thing with your champion points now i know this is going to be tougher for for some people because you might be newer you might not have as many cp available to you now when you are first placing your cp focus most of your efforts on placing the points in the stars that you slot because this is where you're going to be getting the most return and the most value for your champion points Zenimax has made these passive stars so shitty that like you could literally like for example if you wanted to you could even just start with i don't even know what one stage is here um you could literally just start with let's say 10 points right and just get half of it because you, you want to just blitz the slottable stars because this is where you're getting the most benefit because like okay yeah if i go from stage one to stage two yeah i gained 260 stamina but like that is like 26 damage on a tooltip <laughs> you know it's nothing it's literally nothing so focus on those on those slottable stars first okay those are going to be the ones that have the most impact on your build now if you do choose to kind of go your own way, make your own build for yourself, or if you're looking at a build from somebody else, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys some things to look out for that you're going to want to make sure are, are present on every single build. Because look, maybe you don't want to follow a build from somebody else. Maybe you do want to craft one yourself. And I applaud you for going the route of the theory crafter because I obviously love theory crafting. Um, it's one of my favorite things to do. But there are some things you want to make sure that you have on all of your builds so that you know you can have maximum maximum effectiveness while you're PvPing. So. You need to have a major damage buff. So if you are playing a stamina character, you need to have a source of major brutality somewhere in your build or you'll be leaving 20% damage on the table. If you are a magicka character, you need to make sure that you have major sorcery somewhere in your build, giving you 20% spell damage. Again, you will be leaving all that damage on the table if you are not running it. Every single character needs to have a source of major resolve in order to get the physical and spell resistance otherwise you are leaving about 10 percent damage mitigation on the table it's a little bit less than 10 percent, but it's you know six thousand resistance okay it's a lot you know you you don't want to just not have that it's a super important buff okay you will be super 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 squishy without this buff now i also recommend that every single person have some sort of snare and root immunity in their build whether it be race against time mist form something else from your class if you cannot move in a in a bigger pvp fight you will die okay you need to have some sort of movement i recommend getting a source of major expedition from somewhere not every class needs it you know i feel like necros can really get away without it but 
even on my mag crow, I run mist form. Okay, I didn't run any movement on my stamp crow, but again, I don't want to get too much into specific character builds. But for the overwhelming majority of people, you're going to want some sort of major expedition and some sort of snare and root immunity in your build so that you're not crawling around the battlefields and you will be able to actually kite out your opponents and get to safety. Okay. The other thing you want to make sure that you have in your build is a source of major endurance if your stamina, which gives you 30% stamina recovery over the course of you know your potion time. Same thing for magicka. You want to make sure you have a source of, I believe it's major intellect for, again, that 30% magicka recovery over that time period. Now, for the most part, this will be coming from your potions, okay? So that's why, again, your potion choice is going to be so important. Is the, that restoration buff of your resources is what will pretty much be coming from there um, another thing that you could also i would say check for in your builds is some semblance of major savagery or major prophecy so savagery is weapon crit prophecy is spell crit now obviously if you're using a malakath build you you don't really care about this but i personally the, i i've never recommended crit as much as i do right now crit damage is actually extremely strong it's very good i think to look for so I think if you are able to fit crit in your build in some capacity, I think it'd be a good thing to have. Definitely not mandatory by any means, but I think it's really, really good. And I think it is something you should, uh, you should, you should, you should try getting, you know, I, I, I like it a lot. I've been running crit more often on actually most of my characters recently, both my mag DK and my Stamplar run, uh, major crit buff and, and I, and I love them. It's a lot of damage. Um, now in terms of just some overarching things, guys, to think about for your build, you need to make sure that you have enough healing and defense to stay alive. So often when I look at people's builds, it's just fucking 97 offensive skills and like barely any defense, okay? If you look at my Stamina Templar here, I have Power of the Light, which is a damage skill, Jabs, which is a damage skill. You also need to make sure you have a Crowd Control. That's, this is a, something else I was about to miss. You need to make sure you have a CC on your build. If you cannot stun your enemies or crowd control them in some way, you are going to have a problem. So make sure you have a CC of some sorts in your build. I would not only rely on an ultimate CC, like, you know, if you have like Dawnbreaker of Smiting, which can stun people, and that's your only source of stun, like, eh, I would run some sort of reliable cc that you can press that will crowd control someone okay so i highly recommend looking into that but again just trying to discuss the overarching uh look at my um skills here okay i have one two three damage skills <laughs> i have three skills that contribute to my damage and even and even then this is a this is a passive okay and otherwise movement skill heal heal armor buff um this is a defensive buff major evasion really easy to get on stamina definitely recommend um heal and major brutality stun y you see what i'm saying like a lot of people way over budget for offense on their builds even on my magic of dragon knight right thinking about his bars his front bar is whip damage skill burning embers damage skill engulfing flames damage skill and flames of oblivion damage skill that's four damage skills okay but then i use a stun on my front bar for fossilize and then my entire back bar is heals buffs and mist form okay you do not need nearly as many damage skills in pvp as you do compared to pve Another good formula that I would recommend that you start following that I've been using a lot more myself personally is using an offensive ultimate on your front bar and a defensive ultimate on your back bar. I've been really liking the, the offensive defensive dichotomy between the two alts. You are able to basically kind of respond to whatever situation. I used to run a lot more like passive alts on my back bar, like temporal guard, but I haven't found them as, as useful recently. So again, this is just like a personal feeling, but I definitely recommend having one offensive alt and one defensive alt on that back bar. Now, something else to look out for when you are building your character and making sure you're not missing out on the passives. ESO fundamentally is a game of passives okay all these different passives that you're getting from cp your passives from your skill trees all of this plays together with your gear the stats from your food the skills the potions it all ties together and if you're missing passives again you are leaving free damage and free stats free defense on the table this is just stuff you're arbitrarily missing okay and so you want to make sure you have all of your class passives all your class passives make sure you have all of them 
Any weapon you're using, make sure you have all of those passives. So I'm two-handed and sword and board. Two-handed. And then I have sword and shield. All those passives, okay? You also want to make sure you have all of the armor passives for the armor you're using. So I actually don't use light armor on this guy. So I have all the medium armor passives, all the heavy armor passives, okay? I am a stage three vampire. So I have all the vampire passives with the exception of the stage four vampire. Um, I use a fighter's guild ability. So I have the fighter's guild pa passives that are relevant to me. Sealed Tracker doesn't do anything for me because Camo Hunter doesn't deal damage. Bounty Hunter has nothing to do with combat. Sigic Order, if we look, I'm using Race Against Time, so I can pick the passives that are relevant to me. Concentrated Barrier lets me get a shield when I block. Clairvoyance reduces the cost. Spell Orb only really applies if you're using one of the spammables, which I'm not. Deliberation only applies to a channel. Doesn't apply to me. Race Against Time is instant. All the Undaunted passives. These are super, super, super important. Make sure you get these. All of the Alliance War passives for Assault. The second two passives for Support. Only You, you don't really ever use Magicka Aid unless you're using one of these skills, and most builds really don't. So you're going to want these second two passives out of Support. Have all of your Racial passives. And then finally, you need to have Medicinal Use from Alchemy. I have a guide on my YouTube channel, a complete crafting guide, that will show you how to level up Alchemy. I think one of my ESO Tips videos has uh, how to level up Alchemy me as well so you can go check those out to level up alchemy you can literally level up your alchemy in like 15 minutes to level 50 and then have rank 3 medicinal use this is you need to have this because this will give you 100 uptime on your potion buffs okay without this you will you will literally be missing important buffs for long periods of time because like we discussed we're getting a lot of important buffs from our potions so on basically most builds so not having this is going to be a huge detriment to your character and i can't tell you again how many times i talk to people and they're like dots build's not working i don't know what to do and i'm and, and then i'm like well do you have your undaunted passives no do you have all your fighter skill passives no do you have all your major skill passives no and so if you're think about it right if you're missing passives from your skill tree and then maybe you have some traits wrong on your gear and maybe you're not running the proper quality of gear and maybe your cp is a little unoptimized right you might think that these are all just a bunch of little things and they can't possibly be why i'm losing but they are because all of these things add up. They all play on each other. And so you are missing so many stats on your character that someone like me isn't. And so if you find yourself dying, you're like, man, like, I don't know what to do. Blah, blah, blah. Take a hard look at your character setup and, and really see, am I missing anything? Am I missing anything? Also, do not be afraid to mess with your attributes. Do not be afraid to mess with your attributes, okay? Um, on all of my builds recently, I have been starting to run 29K health plus, and I recommend you do the same thing for yourself. Health is really, really valuable right now. And so even if that means you drop some max stat, like, I'm only running 27k stam, you know, to make sure I can get the health. I mean, granted, that's got to do with my build. But regardless, on some of my other builds, I've literally lowered my max stat to be able to get more HP. So do not be afraid to move points out of either stamina or magicka into health to be able to bolster that health pool speaking of stats one other thing that people always ask me about is dots how much of x do i need how much of y do i need etc it's, uh, unfortunately it depends a lot of times right there's really not a one-stop shop answer to what specifically amounts of stats you need because again it all depends right you're not going to need as much stamina recovery if you have other sources of stamina sustain in other ways right you're not going to need as much um you know flat weapon damage if you have more pen or more other things right like the, there are things that all play on each other that are you know are important to have and i would say that if you just follow like again one of the builds on my website that'll give you a really really good profile for resistances and damage and penetration you kind of need a little healthy amount of everything I, I especially if you're building your own character and you're trying to think about how to build don't overcommit to anything okay don't overcommit to pen don't overcommit to damage don't overcommit to recovery resistance you're profile on your character should feel balanced yes it should have some stronger areas of course but try to have a bet more balanced damage profile because it will lead to a better character build in the long run now something else i want to really touch on is the recovery okay 
Recovery is a very personal stat. Obviously, people that are really good at the game don't need as much recovery as people that might be newer. If you're struggling to manage your resources, if let's say you try my, you know, my mag DK build, you know, I know I'm on my stamp plot right now, but let's say I try, you try my magic dragon knight build and you go, that's, I just, I can't sustain with the amount of recovery that you run. Throw on another magic or recovery glyph. It's better that you, you run an amount of sustain that you can sustain, okay? As opposed to what I can sustain. Because I've also been playing Magic of Dragonite for five years. If you've only been playing it for, you know, a couple of weeks, uh, you, you, you might have to run more, you know? So don't be scared to, oh, but my damage, the damage. Just stop attaching yourself to the stats, okay? Run more recovery because you're not, you're not going to be able to take use of the damage if you're dead, you know? So start with higher recovery i did when i was new i started with way higher recovery and then over time as i got better and i was like oh you know this feels like a little bit too much then i lowered it it is better to start with higher recovery and lower it over time than go the opposite way so especially when you're new especially when you're new so start with that higher recovery amount don't be afraid to adjust that okay don't be afraid to, to do so and um i'm trying to think if there's anything else i want to mention here um Crit resist, I would say make sure that you have at least 1,800 to 2k crit resist to prevent yourself from getting one shot. Um, very, very, very important. If you run less than that, you are you are playing with fire, my friend. You are definitely playing with fire. Um, and then I would just say, just make sure that on your builds, guys. You know, again, I know this isn't going to apply to every single person, depending on how you build your character. Don't forget about your defense, man. Don't forget. I know you, you know, I know there's a lot of people that flex in YouTube comments. Dots Gaming. My build's got 20 billion weapon damage and bro, it's got fucking 20,000 pen. Your build is trash. But it's like, yeah, but you got six defense and you can't sustain, you know? You got to remember that there's more to the game than just pumping out massive damage. And when a lot of you, you know, a lot of people ask me like, how do you survive so long? How do you live so long? Like, what are you doing? It's because my sustain is good and I built enough defense to be able to take enough damage and survive for long enough and actually be able to heal myself. You know, these things are important to build. You know, look, I think my Stamina Templar is actually a really, really good example of this because he is one of my squishier characters. So I'm actually going to be changing his build slightly. Right now I'm running Bloodspawn as a form of defense. I'm going to be getting Magma Incarnate, but Bloodspawn's still good to talk about it. This gives me some resistance, right? Gives me gives me some some damage mitigation on my character. And if you guys want to know about how much damage mitigation it's, you're you're getting, do the amount of resistance that you're getting divided by 660. So that's 3731 uh, resistance. So 3731 divided by 660. It's about 5.65% damage mitigation when it procs. You know, so that's a form of damage mitigation I have in my build. If you look, I'm also wearing the Mark and Ring of Majesty. That gives me 2300 armor. Okay. Okay, so if we have 2300 armor coming from the ring, we divide that by 660. That is again another three and a half percent damage mitigation just coming from this singular ring that I'm wearing. Um, on my back bar, I run a defending one hander and a reinforced shield mostly because I dodge rolled a lot in this build. So I wanted to build max damage mitigation on that back bar, and by going defending, you know, with the with this with this trait here i'm now gaining another 2.5 percent damage mitigation you know like all these things they add up you know they all they all add up and they all play a role also i every time like every time as i talk more i just remember more and more things i want to talk about this is why i told you guys in the first video these were going to be long <laughs> another thing is for when it comes to trading your armor you basically on nearly every build if you're wearing a piece of heavy, the piece of heavy should be your chest and it should be reinforced, okay? Do not run impen chest. And you might be, you, you, I don't know if you anybody's been wondering like, oh, why does everybody run the reinforced chest? It is because if you run a reinforced heavy chest, you actually will mitigate more crit damage than if you run a impen heavy chest, okay? And then the, the reinforce is also going to obviously mitigate regular damage more so than the impen, just with the way that the math ends up working. But that's only for reinforced heavy on the chest, okay? So just keep that in mind. That if you are running a piece of heavy in your gear, the chest should all it should always be on the chest. It should always be reinforced. Because the way that like the armor weights work and everything for the amount of armor that you gain chest is the most okay you get the most armor value off of your chest that is then followed up by the helmet the shoulders the legs and the boots all in the same tier followed by the gloves followed by the belt so your lower armor pieces like if they're light armor should always be in the gloves the belt and then not the chest okay at that point it could be anywhere else um 
If you're wearing like a 511 and you only have one piece of light, obviously you want to make it your belt. If you're going to wear one piece of heavy, make it your chest, you know? So try to optimize those armor weight places because again, we don't want to leave any free stats on the table. So try to make sure, you know, if you're wearing, you know, well, that's, I'm wearing 511, one heavy belt, one light chest, and five medium pieces. It's like, well, you're throwing, you know? You should have the light on the belt, the heavy on the chest, and the medium everywhere else. You know, try to think about that when you're building your character, you know? So you you can't you can't just say, well, I'm wearing the 511, but you got to make sure the placements are correct. You know, it's another another thing that you need to keep in mind, you know? In terms of general blue CP layout, I highly recommend for most people that you run two defensive stars and two offensive stars. I think that's going to give you um, the most balanced layout in terms of how to actually set your CP up. Um, in terms of the red side, I pretty much recommend 99% of people run balanced vitality. I have very few builds that I don't run this. The health from it is extremely strong to come by. And then for the other red CP that I recommend, sustained by suffering, most people should be using as well, unless you're playing a ganker, which, but if you're playing a ganker, this whole video is going to be a lot less relevant to you um and then unless you have another source of major protection in your build absolutely run relentlessness this is extremely strong major protection after you're stunned which is going to be the, the case where you're the most scared of dying so relentlessness is going to be really really good for you so these three cp i pretty much run on most of my builds with my fourth cp being my flex cp so if i'm on a more brawly build i'm going to run pain's refuge to give myself that damage mitigation as more of negative effects are on me my stamina templar however is all about the need for speed so i run celerity for more movement speed so usually I'll flex between like those two stars. Obviously, if you are a Sork, you could also look more into Bastion as well. Bastion's a really good option for you. Um, Juggernaut is like only good to use if you get major protection from somewhere else in your build. You don't need this move relentlessness over to, to Juggernaut. Um, but that pretty much covers the blue and the red CP. In terms of green, obviously you use whatever you want. The only two that I really recommend getting a rationer to add more time to your food and buff drinks you just have to use them less often and then liquid efficiency to give you more potions over time those are like the only two stars i think you really should use whatever else you want to use is completely up to you um now in terms of recommended add-ons i'm not going to go crazy going over my full add-ons list because i'm gonna i'll link the add-ons guide in the description below check out my add-ons guide that's literally how i have my entire ui set up but there are going to be some add-ons that are important for you. Number one is action duration reminder. Install it. Use it. It's amazing. Anything else past that, if you guys want any other part of my UI, again, my add-ons list will be found in the description below. Feel free to go watch the video. Also discusses how to actually download Minion and, uh, and set it up. But guys, now on that note. I do think that's going to be it for me today. I know I like, kind of tangented a, a lot in this video, but I hope that you guys were able to follow the thread. There's a lot to talk about, and a lot to discuss with building your character, right? But the main thing that I wanted to kind of drive across and drive home with this video, you cannot leave free stats on the table because I know you might be thinking that, oh, all these little things can't possibly add up, but they do, okay? We always recommend that ESO is a game of passives. If you see me using a weapon and you're wondering why I'm using it, check out the passives because your answer might be there, okay? You know, don't forget that there's also dynamic scaling now on light attacks so you know your light attacks from a great sword will scale with your highest resource you know like things like that just always keep that stuff in mind when you are when you are looking at builds and when you're playing and, and wondering why things are um the way they are but i really do hope that this helped you guys and it gave you a lot to think about and, and ways to kind of kind of examine your builds again feel free if you need a, a starting build template check out my website dotsgaming.com i have a pvp build for every class every role on the website all laid out and if you have any questions about them you can always ask me in my discord or over on my stream I, if you are a healer as well you can find healing builds on my website i've had a lot of people that use the healing pvp builds and have all reported amazing success with them so feel free to check them out as well and i pretty much run like a same gear set across all of them because it's really good so feel free to check those out as well but guys i do think on that note that's going to be it for me today i hope you found this video helpful if you did smack a like on it share it with a friend if they need help getting started in pvp as well if you have any questions feel free to leave them below and guys feel free to subscribe to keep up to date with the ultimate eso pvp guide beginner series i will also again leave a link to the entire playlist in the description below so you guys can keep up with it and follow it to never miss a video but thank you so much for stopping by today i do very much appreciate it as always i am dots gaming and I'll see you all in the next guide.